We want to touch now on something that was we saw around a, an article regarding the Labour Party of England, Great Britain, I suppose. I don't think that's true because Scottish Labour are a different party. They have a different leader and so to Welsh Labour. So we're unsure really. This might just be the Labour Party in England. But we, we saw an article online from arguably one of the most rotten sources of news you can get anywhere, the Daily Mail. They've got no end of other papers. The, the man, they own a hell of a lot more. They own the Metro and they own countless others. But for this inflammatory, rotten, divisive article that they've written, basically we're not going to give it any airtime whatsoever. It's written to purely divide, inflame and anger whoever reads it. And also we we see there was a there's always been retractions that the mail have to print when they write such rotten divisive garbage. Because they also found under the great work of some of these uh far left independent voices, we might not agree with them, but we don't we don't decry their work. They do an excellent job in uh holding people to account. But it's biased, isn't it? It's left wing, it's biased. They only they only hold to account their opponents. They don't hold to account themselves. <coughs> so <coughs> so that falls to rotten rotten media outlets like the mail to do that with rotten, disgusting, inflammatory articles like this. That that nobody even knows is true or not because of their record of retractions is so high that when they print stuff like this, most people really their default position should be to just dismiss it as nonsense. But on this occasion, we feel, and we, we, we are amazed to have seen this, and to have to say this, and it just goes to show what a, an occult, upside down world we live in. The Daily Mail appear to have told the truth. Yes, hold the front page, shut the front door. <laughs> The Daily Mail has told the truth. It has come over to a decision by East Midlands Labour gathering in Loughborough. Um, and they, what they have done is they seem to have appeared to have set up, uh, this is as of the 18th, the 20th of January at 9.27 in the morning. It was updated 9.27 on the 21st of January. And as it stands there, the article is saying, alleging, we're still going to use the word alleged because the Labour Party have fallen back later, that there has been a tier scheme set up for an event which would indicate that there is a, an ele a heavy element of racism involved in this scheme, where it would appear that people of a certain ethnicity are being given it cheaper than people, other people of other certain faiths, colours and creeds. You know? That is rotten. That is rotten thinking. Uh, we here like to think we condemn all forms of racism. You know? Selective condemning of racism is one of the most rotten things you will see in the current climate. They, people will condemn certain racism and in fact encourage others by by policies like this, you know. And what it also does is it exacerbates the Daily Mail and allows them to write rubbish because one true article will always lead to ten, at least, lying, deceptive articles. There has to be a grain of truth in them or they have to be based on something that's happened in order for the public to believe them. So rotten policies like this from Loughborough or from East Midlands Labour, they feed into it. They divide, try to divide, well they do divide, they agitate, they inflame and all the time all this goes unchecked by the so-called fact checkers that are set up by organisations to look into the only what they want to look into. You know, you can't my advice to anybody would be don't trust any of these fact checkers. They're all liars. 
and they've all got agendas. You only have to look at who funds these organisations and as to who is shareholders in them to, to know that. So what we did is we sent, we sent an email to the Labour Party after what we can only be described as protracted conversations on the telephone with various departments of the Labour Party, conference, conference services, press office. We tried to get through to all of them. None of them would talk about it to us on the phone. What they said is they asked for questions in writing, which we, which we kindly provided to the uh, press office as soon as we, we, we could. They did, they did not keep, they promised us a statement the day before yesterday in the afternoon. That never came. So we had to chase them up for something we had been promised. The lesson there really is don't trust anything politicians or political parties tell you. They are professional liars. You'd be an idiot to believe anything that comes out of a politician or a political party's mouth. So we chased them up yesterday. We found that difficult. No one would seem to answer their phones. We tried all the previous extensions. The only one that seemed to be working yesterday was the one for donations. <laughs> Funnily enough, we had no trouble getting through on that. So we just got up, we got through on that and just asked them to direct us to the press office, which they did. So eventually, at around uh, 2 p.m. yesterday afternoon, a bit before that actually, we received our response to our to our written statement, to our answers we had given. Before we give you the answers, before you give you the statement, it's only fair that we give you the answers. You know, because they're important. Number one, what basic, simple question? Is the article true? Is there any truth in the article whatsoever? That will give them an opportunity to say, well, it might be slightly exaggerated and misleading, but we have sort of done that, and this is why we've done it. And then we could have uh, put their case, and then people could have just drawn their own conclusions. Or, as I expected at the time, they would have said, that's oh, a load of nonsense. It's not happened. It's fake news. Daily Mail fake news. Again, we have complained, and they'll be retracting it next week. Number two, please can you clarify who the colleague who was working on this in the National Press Office is? The reason I asked that question is because when I spoke to the press officer, she was very reluctant to tell me who it was. <laughs> so I just wanted to know. So I kept asking, who was it, who was it, who was it, who was it? And then she just hung up before I could determine who it was. So I thought, I thought she could tell me who it was. And then number three, what is the Labour Party position on equality currently? I mean, that's fair enough, we think. Um, we can't really comment on the article until we ascertain the legitimacy of it. We also offered them Skype audio calls that I could have recorded and played out to state their case. They said, no, we would provide you with a written statement. That never came. Like we said, the written statement came the day after. And this is it. The Labour Party is taking advice on other ways we can increase the representation of black and ethnic minority members at the East Midlands Regional Conference at Loughborough in February. The intention behind the black and, me black and ethnic minorities pass was to increase the representation of underrepresented groups, which remains a a priority for the party. I mean, how has that asked, answered any of our questions whatsoever? All it tells us is something we didn't even ask, whether the, we can ascertain that the pass has been withdrawn. So we can only deduce from that that there must have been an element of truth in the article. We haven't had that confirmed from them yet. We've had to go to legal services. We were just, when we tried to find out, yes, we're not happy with the statement. We want our questions asked, answered. They said, oh, you need to go to legal services. So we have spoke to, they have actually been very helpful. They have some, be they have some very exotic surnames. and just, It was just an absolute pleasure to talk to her, the lady on the phone. And she has suggested that what we did is send her the email copy of the response together with our questions and then move forward. So we've done that. We've had an automated response from them and they have promised to get back to us within 10 days. So we, we await what they say. But as it stands at the minute, the pass has been withdrawn. So we think we can deduce from that that the, the Rotten Daily Mail 
disgusting Daily Mail appears this time to have actually told the truth, which we think raises a hell of a lot of questions. Where is this rotten thinking coming from? Where is this rotten thinking coming from within East Midlands Labour? Rotten, divisive thinking such as this to inflame the situation. Absolutely disgraceful. So, so we're trying to find out where that is coming from. So we can, we can hold that person to, or that group to account. We have to feel sorry for the people of Loughborough at this moment because we thought we'll get the Loughborough MP's opinion on this. So we looked to see who it was. It was Nicky Morgan. Talk Conservative MP Nicky Morgan. So some of our speeches are there. We're actually going to, once, once we've got all this in, we're actually going to, we're not, the last thing we want to be seen to be doing is, is helping a woman like Nicky Morgan. So we're just going to state the facts as we see them and move on. You know, so in 10 days time we will hopefully get a response from legal queries at Labour, within the Labour Party. We might, we might give a, a quick tinkle to these, to Labour East Midlands after that. We'll see what they've got to say. But as it stands, we're not here to help Nicky Morgan whatsoever. We've, we've read her speeches, the same as everybody else. We've seen, we've seen what, spe what uh, functions she likes to speak at. So, it's the people of Loughborough. They really are stuck in the middle here, between a rock and a hard place. A vote for Nicky Morgan, or a vote for this lot. So, poor old people of like Loughborough, eh? Very disappointing outcome that was to find out that Nicky Morgan was the MP of Loughborough. That's about it really.